પછી આજ્ઞા આવો શા પછી આજ્ઞા આવો Shalom brothers and sisters, once again it's the voice of Brother Tazadak coming at you through the spirit of Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shah. We begin all things with the illustrious name of over the 18 original nations. Some of you may not know, some of you may not know, some of you may concur and others may not concur. And if you do not, as saith in the scriptures, produce your proof. Now, according to the Bible, according to Genesis, the 10th chapter, According to Deuteronomy, the 32nd chapter, verse 8, according to Acts um, 17 and 26, and the Holy Apocrypha, in Ecclesiasticus 4 and 16, the nations that I'm about to go over, or indeed the 18 original nations on the planet Earth, all other nations derive from these. Now, we know after the flood, that was Shimham and Yephet. So, the sons of Shem, Elam, today they would be known as the so called East Indian. Those are the so called East Indian people, the people that's taken on all of these different philosophies. Some of them divided into Hinduism, some of them divided into Islam, and call themselves um, Bang Bang Bangladesh. And so on and so forth. Um, they're all the same people, brothers and sisters. But Elam is the so-called East Indians today. When you read the Bible and get a proper understanding. The Assyrians are the so-called Kurds today. And Elam is the so-called East Indians. Um, referred to Genesis, the 10th chapter, verse 22. And also um, First Chronicles 1 and 17. The Assyrians today would be the so-called Kurds. Um, Genesis, the 10th chapter, verse 22, 1 Chronicles, 7th chapter. The Syrians are indeed the Syrians, the people of Syria. Genesis, the 10th chapter, 10 and 22, and 1 Chronicles, 1 and 17. The Ishmaelites or the people known as Arabs. Now, here's where the confusion come in. Sometimes to get the proper understanding, we have to look at the etymology of the word. Many of you look at Arabs as a nationality. Arabs is not a nationality. When you look at the root word, first of all, Arabic has its root in Sererit. So when you look at the root word, the etymology of the word, Arab derives from the word Araba which means a person that roams from place to place like a nomad. That was not actually a nationality. They made it one. Just like you so-called blacks. Someone asked you your nationality. The vast majority of you a few years ago didn't say Israel, right? You said black. Well, that's not a national um, standard of people. That's not your nationality. But many of you think it is, and when you when you respond with such ignorance, the other nations they look at you and they laugh. So the Ishmaelites, the true Ishmaelites, are not the pale Arabs that you see today. Those people invaded that land, ravaged the so-called African women, mixed in amongst those people, and produced the stock of people that you see today. They're nothing but Ottoman Turks. So they, they invaded and they stole those people's way of life and now they put a spin on it and call it fundamentalistic Islam today. And those pale Arabs that's claiming that they belong in Palestine, well, that was our land. Not to denounce anyone, I just want to um, put the truth out. And the truth will make you free. Maybe first it'll make you mad, then make you free. Not set you free, but make you free. Now, the, the original people known as the Arabs were so-called black people by skin. Why do I say that? Because we know that it's an undisputable fact, and I don't want to go into this, that Abraham, the one that they refer to as Ibrahim, 
in Arabic was a so-called black man. He was a Hebrew. Thus, he made it with a what? A handmaiden, Hagar, a so-called African woman, which means the Arabs had to be black. Case closed, a done deal. Ball game. Okay, Moab. Now, you have our Moors brothers and sisters, Yahweh bless their soul, stating that they're the Moabites of the Bible. I like to point out a couple things. First of all, Moab. I, I don't. I'm not. Don't want to attack the brothers and sisters. Moab. Moab had a brother. Why don't you ever speak of him? If you're the Moabites of the brother uh, of the Bible, wouldn't your brother and mine also be um, doing things in relation to what you're doing? Wouldn't yeah, brothers and sisters, I just really wanted to clear this up about Ruth. You know, a lot of our Moors brothers and sisters are not really aware that they're Israelite. That's right. Um, you guys are also from the nation of Israel, Yasha Allah, the children of God. And a lot of you have picked up the um, false doctrine of Islam, yet you claim not to follow religion. Who exactly is it that you're praying to in your prayers? But I don't want to get into that topic. I just want to clear this up about Ruth. Understand this. In the scriptures, when the Heavenly Father is given a genealogy of nations, he always give it to the seed line of the man. Um, David's seed is. Joseph's seed was. Isaac's seed was. Abraham's seed was. So it's the seed of the father that determines the nation of that particular people, a person. So when we read the book of Ruth, in the book of Ruth, Ruth's story essentially begins when an Israelite woman by the name of Naomi and her husband, um, Elimelech, leave their hometown of Bethlehem um, at that particular time Israel was actually suffering from a famine so they decided to relocate to a nearby nation of Moab amongst the Moabites and eventually Naomi's husband dies and Naomi's two sons died but prior to Naomi's sons dying they marry more by women. Women. One by the name of Oprah and the other by the name of Ruth. Ruth was a Moabite. Now, after 10 years of marriage, both of Naomi's sons die of unknown causes. It doesn't really give why they die. So, she decides at such time that it's time to return to her homeland because she heard that the Most High is giving bread back in her homeland of Israel because the famine has subsided and she no longer has immediate family amongst the Moabites, amongst Moabs. So Naomi tells her daughters-in-law about her plans and both of them says they want to go with her at first. But, you know, she tells them about, you know, you're still young women and so on and so forth, and you can remarry since both of your husbands are dead. But, you know, so Naomi actually advised them to stay in their homeland and remarry and begin their lives again or start a new marriage and so on and so forth because they are young women and eventually Oprah eventually decides that she's going to stay amongst the Moabites so she kisses Ruth I mean I'm sorry she kisses Naomi but Ruth insists on staying with Naomi in fact in the scripture when you read Ruth 1 and 16 it reads as such 
don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. That's what Ruth tells Naomi. She said, where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. So understand this. Understand this. You descendants. You know, th those of you that's claiming Ruth, the Moabites, understand this. It's the seed of the father. And I'm going to show you how she went back and she married an Israelite man. And they was following the lifestyle of Israel and not Islam. Many of you got thrown on, or of course, you know, following these damn um, Ottoman Turks. But nevertheless, you know, so she started worshiping the God of Israel. So after Ruth actually converts to the lifestyle of an Israelite, she and Naomi arrived in Israel, and while the Bar barley harvest was actually underway. So now, you know, they are so poor that Ruth must go out and gather food that actually has fallen on the ground while the harvesters are actually gathering the crops. So in doing so, Ruth has actually taken advantage of the Israelite law that's actually derived from Leviticus the 19th chapter, verse 9 and 10. This law actually prohibits the farmers from gathering all of their crops, you know, all the way to the edges of the field and from picking up food that actually has fallen to the ground. And these practices actually made it possible for the poor to feed their families by gathering what is left behind by the farmers. In, they, in their fields. Now, as luck would have it, Ruth is in the field and Ruth <clears throat> is working in the field gathering, you know, the crops. And she actually encounters a man by the name of Boaz, who is actually a relative of Naomi's deceased husband. So when Boaz learns that a woman is gathering food in his fill, he tells his workers that, verse 14, um, Ruth 2 and 14, and Boaz said unto her, at mill time, come thou hither, and eat of bread, and dip thy morsel into vinegar. And she sat besides the reapers, and he reached her perch corn, and she did eat, and was suffice, and left. Verse 15. And when she was risen up to glean, glean means to go out and gather something or collect something such as crops and so on and so forth. Boaz commanded his young men, saying, Let her glean even amongst the sheaves, and reproach her not. Verse 16, and let fall also some of the handfuls of purpose for her and leave them that she may glean them and rebuke her not. That could be found in Ruth 2 and 14. So Boaz then gives Ruth a gift. You know, he gave her the gift of the roasted grain and to tell her that she should feel safe working in her fields. So in conclusion, when Ruth tells Naomi what happened, Naomi tells her about the connection with Boaz. So Naomi then advises Ruth, you know, her daughter-in-law, to dress herself up and sleep at Boaz's feet while he and his workers are camping out in the field for the harvest. So Naomi hopes that by doing so, that Boaz would actually marry Ruth and will have a home in Israel. Now, Ruth actually follows Naomi's advice, and when Boaz discovers her at his feet in the middle of the night, he asks her, who is she? And Ruth replies in the book of Ruth 3 verse 9, and he said, who art thou? 
And she answered, I am Ruth, thine handmaid. Spread therefore thy skirt over thy handmaid, for thou art a near kinsman. Now, what Ruth is actually referencing is, is actually an ancient custom, like where a brother would marry the wife of his deceased brother if he died without children. Now, the first child born of that union would then be considered the child of the deceased brother and would actually inherit the properties. But now because Boaz is not the brother of Ruth's dead husband, the custom is technically did not apply to him. But nevertheless, while he is actually interested in marrying her, there is a relative more closely related to Elimelech who has a stronger claim. So what actually happens the following day, Boaz speaks with this relative and with 10 elders as witness. And then Boaz tells him that Elimelech and his sons have land in Moab that must be redeemed. But that in order to claim it, the relative must marry Ruth. But the relative is actually interested in the land, but he does not want to marry Ruth since in doing so, it would mean his own estate would be divided amongst any children that he would have with Ruth. So he asks Boaz to act as his redeemer, which Boaz is actually more than happy to do. So he marries Ruth and she soon give birth to a son named Obed, who becomes the grandfather of King David. Now, because the Messiah is actually prophesied to come from the house of David, so both the greatest king in Israel's history and the future Messiah is connected to Ruth in that way a Moabite woman who actually could convert it over to our way of life, the Israelites, and became amongst the Israelites. That is how you Moors are tied to Israelites. So you Moors are really Israelites because it's the seed of the father that determines what the child is. Understand that. The woman is the film in which the man plant his seed. It's the seed of the Father that determines what nation you are. There is no such thing as a mixed person. Understand that. Now you have the truth. What are you going to do with it? You could either embrace the truth or rebuke it. But it's time to do away with all this foolish nonsense about your Moabites. No, you're not. It's the seed of the Father. You're an Israelite. Yasha'awa, the children of God. And you heard it from the mouth of your brother, Tazadak, so now you know who said it. Yeah, brothers and sisters, I just really felt the need to really clear that up about Moab. And Emine, Ben I mean, the brother of Moab, is the so called Japanese. Um, read, refer to Genesis, the 19th chapter, verse 30 to 35, and also the book of Ezekiel, the 25th chapter, verse 1 through 12. The people of Edom, Esau, Edom meaning red, Esau meaning hairy, Adawam in Hebrew, Aishor, wasted away, is the so-called white people, when you read the Bible and get understanding. Refer to Genesis, the 25th chapter, verse 19 through 34, and Genesis, the 36th chapter. Israel, Yasha Allah, are the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Refer to Genesis, the 29th chapter, verse 32 through 35, and the 30th chapter, verse 1 through 20, 24, verse 40, um, chapter 40. Um... Verse 50 to 52 and the 49th chapter of Genesis, verse 1 through 28. And to let you know 
who the Israelites are. You can identify them by the plagues that actually only apply to us. In the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, verse 15 through 68. And again, in the book of Leviticus, the 26th chapter, verse 14 to the end of the chapter. And that is the descendancy of the sons of Shem. From there, you have the sons of Ham, who's Cush. They are the so-called Ethiopians, refer to Genesis, the 10th chapter, verse 6 through 12, and First Chronicles. The first chapter, verse 8 through 10. You have Mizraim. They are the so-called Egyptians. Refer to Genesis, the 10th chapter, verse 6, verse 13 and 14. And First Chronicles, the first chapter, verse 11 and 12. Put is the so-called North Africans. Again, Genesis, the 10th chapter. And First Chronicles, 1 and 8. The Canaanites... Or the so-called South African people. When you read the Bible and get understanding. Again, Genesis the 10th chapter. Verse 6, 15 through 19. And First Chronicles. First chapter. Verse 13 through 16. And that completes the descendancy of Ham. From there, we have the sons of Jephet. Better yet, Jephet. Who are Gomorrah. They are the so-called French, refer to Genesis, the 10th chapter, verse 2 to 3, and First Chronicles, the first chapter, verse 5 to 6. You have Magar, the so-called Russians, refer to Genesis, the 10th chapter, verse 2, and First Chronicles, first chapter, verse 6. You have Javan, they are the so-called Greeks, Genesis, the 10th chapter, verse 4. And Chronicles 1 and 7. And you have not Ashkenaz, so called Germans, Genesis the 10th chapter, verse 3, and 1 Chronicles 1 and 6. You have Tushish, who's the so called Spain, Genesis the 10th chapter, verse 4, and 1 Chronicles 1 and 7. And you have Kittim. They are so called Italy, before the Genesis 10th chapter, verse 4, and 1 Chronicles 1 and 7. Now, the people of Jeffrey could really confuse you unless you thoroughly study scripture. You see, the original people of Jephthah, when you read Genesis, the 10th chapter, verse 2 through 4, would be known today as the Hawaiians, the Filipinos, the Indonesians, the Polynesians, the Eskimos, and the Aboriginals of Australia. Also, the natives of New Guinea, Tahiti, and the Samoans. These people were actually pushed out of their land located in Europe around 8th century BC by those people that refer to themselves today as Greeks and Romans. See, today, Greece, Russia, Italy, Germany, Spain, France are inhibited by so-called white people. They are Edomites. So the people that carry those titles today are Edomites. Those people whose forefathers are the ones that stole Yephet's land. To prove this, read Deuteronomy 7 verse 7. I'm sorry, Daniel 7 verse 7. And the second chapter verse 40. Also refer to St. John's 10 and 10, Job 9, 24, Psalms 49 and 11, Deuteronomy 27 and 17. And finally, Proverbs 22 and 28. And there you have it, brothers and sisters, from your brother Taza Doc. Now you can like that, understand it, believe it or not. But those are the nations according to the Bible. Genesis, the 10th chapter, Deuteronomy, the 32nd chapter, verse 8, Acts 17 and 26, and the Holy Apocrypha, Ecclesiasticus 4 and 16. Remember the law going to www.lawsheepisrael.org. And the brother Taza Doc is signing out. I say shalom, shalom, Yahshua, most high in Christ. Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah.